Hi guys, welcome to Let's Talk Cafe. I've got my friend Mika Bukona here with me who joined. Welcome, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Um, welcome to Let's Talk Cafe and we are here in Surfers Paradise. Yeah. How good is this, mate? <laughs> it's it's full of sun. You know, I live in Melbourne and, and you live here in Brisbane. Yeah. You know, uh, if you're wondering where Surfers Paradise is, guys, uh, it's in Queensland, yep. you know, in Australia. Beautiful place uh, to visit. And we're here in a place called Kitty O'Shea's. It's not, it's not exactly a cafe, but you know, it's, it's, it's just past 11 a.m. in the morning. And, uh, you know, we thought we'll, we'll come up here. And it's a beautiful day. The beach is just, you know, walking distance out here. Before, before we start, you know, talking about your journey, um, beautiful journey, uh, you know, to sports, um, you know, uh, experience with mental health and also what you're doing now, which I'm really interested to share uh, with, with, with the people who are watching us. Um, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about Let's Talk Cafe. If you're wondering, uh, we've been running these uh, podcasts for a while now, and really it's about promoting um, you know, people to talk about their concerns before they escalate to bigger things. And, yeah. the, and the vision of Let's Talk is letting everyone talk safely. So LETS, you know, letting everyone talk safely is a vision of this program. And we are, you know, we are trying to encourage people to talk openly about their concerns before they escalate through the talk strategies, T-A-L-K, tell, tell when people are, you know, concerned, yeah. worried and, and approach them and support them. Then when they open up, acknowledge them uh, about their concern with, with, you know, with gratitude, you know, with, with empathy, and then listen to them uh, for them to externalize their concern and then finally keep in touch, keep, keep in touch. So that, that is the program. We've ordered some coffees and they're coming. Hey, buddy. Oh, we're going to have some beef coffees here for you. Oh, lovely. oh yes. Thanks, I've, got the, I've got the last day. Thank you very much. Awesome. Appreciate it, hey, thanks for having yeah. us here in your yeah, TV right. show, man. Hey, come and say hi, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Ruby, my name, man. Ruby. Ruby, Ruby Pearson, manager here at El Kitty O'Shea's bar. Okay, nice to okay, what, what, what are you guys doing here, actually? Uh, well, we're running a, a podcast. It's called Let's Talk Cafe. Okay. And Let's Talk is about encouraging people to talk, you know, Beautiful. and <laughs> talk about their concerns before they escalate, right? Crazy. So, oh, yeah. um, so, so it's more like mental health? Like yeah, mental health it, it, it is yeah. about mental health, you know? Yeah. And, you know, especially these days with um, COVID and, you know, mm, you know yeah, isolation, yeah. you know, sure. things are escalating. So we want to yeah. really help the people that are watching this program. Beautiful, yeah. Um, so just have a month, chat amongst yourself and like... That's it, man. That's, that's exactly that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, easy, yeah, yeah. hey, guys. Awesome. I'll get back to work. I'll you guys be told, all right? Okay, okay, Thank you. Thank you, guys. You too. Well. Take care. Um, this is good. Yeah, it's fantastic. So um, before uh, uh, I... Ex I, I, I um, you know, uh, ask Mika to talk about his story. Um, I just want to thank you for attending and thank you for coming here and really sharing your story. Um, I want to introduce Mika for those people who haven't heard about Mika Bukona. Now, Mika, you've got an illustrious career in sport for 20 years now, um, playing basketball. Yes. Um, he played for Brisbane Bullets for the last couple of years. He was uh, the captain of New Zealand Breakers for seven years, from 11 to 18, I think, 2011. He was the captain of New Zealand um, All Blacks, yeah, for, for about nine years, I think, uh, close to nine years. Silver and bronze medalist in the Commonwealth uh, Games in Melbourne in 2006 and Gold Coast in 2018. Wow, you know, amazing achievements. He, you're on the board currently on New Zealand um, Basketball players this sort of shit as well. Yeah, because it's independent. Uh, independent. Yeah. And also, um, you got, you're heading off to Tasmania tomorrow, is it? <laughs> yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow. And, and, and what's that for? Uh, as a consultant for the uh, the new NBL team, we've been set up there, the Tasmanian uh, Jack Jumpers. Yeah. <laughs> don't know. Don't know. Oh, that name came in. And, mate, you played, you know, in, in, in a few countries, you know, mm -hmm. including Lebanon, Italy, you know, obviously New Zealand, here and here as well. Now, Mika is also the founder and managing director of MOF, and we'll talk about that a bit later. Now, he says that really, um, you know, one, it's a one-stop, uh, you know, uh, transition program to help uh, elite athletes um, from the pressure of professional environment, but also to assist athletes to, um, you know, with their transition, you know, after their life of, of sports, you know. It's MOF is, a, I guess, a service for life, you know, as you say. 
But today, Mika is here to uh, join us uh, to talk about and share with him, with us his journey with, with depression when he was younger and how uh, that journey with depression is also driving his passion to help other athletes, all right? So welcome, man. Thank you. So, Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. And um, so let's start from the start. You know, tell us about, you know, the history about you getting into sports, you know, your history. Uh, I know you're originally from Fiji. Yes. Yeah, tell us yeah. your story. Yeah, well, I'm adopted. Um, I was brought over in Fiji, from Fiji, I should say, sorry, in 87 when the coup first happened there with Ron Booker. Yeah. Um, so I ended up in New Zealand in 87. Uh, I lived with my parents and my, I guess, brothers and sisters. So there's five of us all, all up. Yeah. Um, and I actually lived a great life, got brought up really well by mum and dad in high school Tauranga. Yep. Um, but only about two and a half hours, I guess, southeast of uh, Auckland. Yep. Um, and that's where, like every kid in New Zealand, you, you want to be a uh, all black. Yeah. Uh, you want to play sports. Yeah. You play every sport under the sun. Yeah. And it just so happened that um, uh, mum said no more rugby. So when I had an age around 14, 15, I had to stop playing. Yeah. And at that time, my brother was playing basketball. Yeah. And that, I guess, is the history of basketball. So I yeah. ended up going there, got some great opportunities uh, through great coaches in New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, got a great mentor and a friend now, Leonard Wishinich. Yeah. Who I ended up following down to Nelson. Um, and then, yeah, that's how I. I guess established and created the foundation of uh, what was able to have a, uh, a blessed life in uh, sport. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah. Played around the world, um, got to experience a lot of cultures, different people. I loved every opportunity that came yeah. through it, but I uh, learned a lot of lessons along the way too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Now, you, you shared with me that uh, I think you were about uh, 16. Yes. When you fell into depression. Yeah. Um, uh, tell us about that. How, how did that happen? Yeah, it came out of nowhere, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and like I've said to you before, it was a small part in my life, but a very, uh, I guess, effective time. It's something that I didn't think it could ever happen to me. We'd talked about it in the high school. Uh, people had acknowledged that it could happen. But when it actually hits you, yeah, yeah, it's something totally different. And yeah. everybody deals with depression differently yeah. and comes up against it. And uh, during that time, um, yeah, it was a sense of helplessness um, and yeah, no direction really. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I've never felt anything since then, uh, never want to. Yeah. Um, but it was something that really affected me uh, during that time growing up. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, thank you. I really want to acknowledge your courage to, uh, to come and share that, you know. Um, and there's a lot of people out there who are going through, you know, depression you know it's, it's becoming common depression anxiety is common it's becoming common especially these days with you know COVID-19 and so forth and isolation but you know every time people do share their story it does help and resonate with other people and and, and I'm sure you're going to share with us how what are the things we can do to come overcome it or to at least manage it yeah and you know you you said to me that yeah, your mom and dad used to you know get you out of bed you know you <laughs> what, what happened there you know and, and I know your, your dad, dad sort of kind of treated you differently to mum, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at that point, I got, oh, sorry, during that time, I still want to get out of bed. Yeah. Um, I went into the lounge or sat in the lounge with uh, brothers and sisters. I didn't participate, you know, yeah. it was just yeah. sitting there and being present yeah. without really being present. Um, I know I was quite an active kid. Yeah. Definitely as a teenager. Yeah. Um, and so, when I started lounging around, you know, it was, especially my dad was like, no, get up. I mean, his method was meet it head on. And um, the best way he knew how to deal with it. And I think he understood who I was, you know. Yeah. I didn't know myself at that point, but it was just like, look, get up, power through the day, keep yourself active. Um, so, yeah, and that's what he did. So, and was it different to mum? Yeah, mum was loving, nurturing. <laughs> but then at the point, I think it gets like it, every parent when they get distressed or not distressed, but they start worrying about their, yeah. their child. He got to the point of dad. He's like, no, I'm not going to sit here and just be a passenger. I'm just going to go with what your dad's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whether or not that's her thinking. Yeah. Uh, Cause I've never really talked to my mum about it or dad. Um, 
and about that situation. But yeah, it's that's how we dealt with it. It was just get up, keep active, um, and that's obviously something that I live to today. Yeah, yeah, and that that pushing and you know you know get out of bed yeah. and just get up there. Um, you know, for somebody listening, it might be might come out as quite a, a tough way of dealing with it. But um, you, you were also saying that it sort of came from love. You know, the intent was love. Yeah. Can you explain a bit about that? Yeah. Um, like I said before, when I first started this with you, I knew I grew up in a blessed life. You know, I got, got taken out of a situation in Fiji where I didn't know my birth mother, didn't know my birth father, and my mum and dad now took me on board. They showed me love by taking them, putting them underneath their roof, but also their actions. Yeah. You know, um, they were loving parents. They still are loving parents, but they created an environment where the family was first and foremost. Yeah. Dinners, yep. um, hanging out together as family members. Yep. So when they came with that kind of action, I knew like, oh, this is coming from a good place. Even though I was in this mental state where I didn't understand anything that was happening around that. Yeah. Yep. But I knew by the past actions yep. and by the yep. continuous, hey, get up with yep. me every day, yep. get going every day. Yep. Even when dad came back from uh, the building site because he was a builder. And still be interacting with me, and it was yeah, just yeah. a constant. constant so there was this connection. Always. It wasn't like you know, get out of bed and 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 leave leave. Right. It's it's that that that, yeah. that check in and that keep in touch yeah. Uh, regularly. Yeah. And it and it wasn't the soft kumbaya kind of stuff. It was just like look, I just knew it was there and they pushed me through it. Yeah. Um, but that's who I am as a person. I think if yeah. you were to do that to another one of my siblings, yeah, it'd be a different approach. But they understood us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, tell us about more. You know, exciting journey. Yeah. Uh, it's it's sort of starting, I guess, in a way, and but you're getting into it. Um, tell us about more and what really drives you. And and initially we said, you know, your 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 depression is mm -hmm. is a driving force or an important force in that as well. Yeah. Tell us about more. Yeah. So morph is, I guess, my experience. Where I've created a business and my experiences in sport. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the sporting world, I've been lucky enough to be in the elite levels of basketball in Australasia yeah. and to participate in that with a lot of other people. And during that journey, I guess you can say the experiences that I've picked up yeah. are the examples that are living right in front of me. Yeah. So when you see a lot of people go through trials and tribulations along the way, through whether it be mental illness, whether it be financially, whether it be through family, things like that, you always need a support base. Yeah. And so with the creation of uh, Morph, uh, we like to say we empower people to take action. So in your own time, we want to support you with five professionals, yeah. proven professionals who own their own businesses, but also have this giving attitude you yeah, know, yeah, to want yeah. to help people. Uh, we surround them with them and we create a... You're building the village. We build the village. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, we are. We build the village around everybody where you it's a constant contact you know yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of moving parts and tools that are attributed with yeah. um morph but the crux of it is the mental uh, welfare of everybody is to support them empower them educate them through uh the coaches yeah educate them in terms of their finances understanding situations where they hold themselves accountable yeah, yeah. so that when an episode occurs or a big life altering situation happens, uh, we are more equipped to deal with it. Yeah. We don't, we can't get rid of all these things that we talk yeah. about, you know, but yeah. if we can give people the power to say, you know what, I've got, I've got the tools to help me get along, yeah, yeah. Um, then let's do it. Yeah. So that's the program. We uh, surround you with people. We really, uh, what's the wording? Um, we really want people to communicate. Communicate. You know, and that's Open why it, yeah. coming on this is, it had to be a yes, because that's what we're all about. It's yeah. Having the constant contact points and where people can engage and talk to yeah. people they trust in yeah. an environment which yeah. they trust, yeah. that they can start building themselves around. Yeah. So, yeah. Fantastic, man. And and it's it's not just for athletes who are who are currently athletes, but yeah. also for that transition, right? Yeah. Transition from athletes to everyday yeah. people. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, so the transition part is what I've just gone through. So more for me in this business has been around 12, 11 to 15 months. Yeah. And that's the process that I've just gone through. I've just recently retired from playing basketball. 
And so you hey, think this he looks tough. way too young to retire. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you saw me at the basketball court, I'd definitely be slow when you're running against 17 year olds. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a you try to alleviate the pressures of stepping out of sport. Yeah, yeah. Whether that be if you were to cut short a career uh, to somebody being there for such a long time that they get used to the adulation, the constant you know, just the lights and bright lights and all that kind of stuff is not to take. Let's create you as a person rather than you as a product of the yeah, yeah, business. Yeah. So we want people to transition their thought process of, let's just say, Mika the uh, basketballer to Mika who plays basketball. And yeah. So when we, why, this is my opinion, this is why the business is created, was if we can create people to start thinking like that, then when they do step away from the sport, they transition away from it, it's not going to be a Big jump off the cliff. Big jump, yeah. It's going to be small steps. Yeah. The smaller the step, the better it is to cope with things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And mental health plays a huge role in that, obviously. And it's like any retirement, you know, whether you're a sports person or a non-sports person, you know, it, you need to have some purpose yes. after after retirement and have a have a journey, have a road. Uh, um, you know, obviously, you've been gifted with the physical, you know, attributes to be an athlete, a great uh, basketball player. How important was mental health in that whole journey for you to, to you know, amazing accolades in sports? Yeah. How did mental health play? And what is, what is some of the things that, you know, when you were, you mm. know, feeling down, not necessarily depressed, but, you know, feeling down, what kept you going? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. I, mean, I think probably the last six, seven years of my playing career wasn't always about the physical attributes. You, know, you had to find a different way to be able to stay out there. And, a lot, a lot of times when I talk to people, I'd say to them, look, for me, it's 80% of it is in the mental game. You know, it's how you apply yourself, how you build yourself up. Um, and a lot of sports are starting to do that. Yeah. Or have been doing that for a lot of time. It's yeah. visual, visualization. Yeah. And so when you marry that up with your mental capacity to cope with things, yeah. um, it's huge. Yeah. You know? And that's why it's like, look, your mind just has to be as sharp as your skills on court. Yeah. on the field or anything that you do yeah. and if you don't take care of that and you don't have that constant um, uplifting exercises or yeah, yeah. interaction with people that are going to get you out of those holes yeah, I mean yeah. when you hit those dark times when you've probably lost a game for the team or you've got all the pressure in the world from yeah, yeah. the fans to deliver what's going to get you through it yeah. you know, for me it was always constantly a mind battle a mind game yeah, this is why part of Morph was also created. Yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, you know, you've had lots of sports training. Um, you talk about, uh, you know, when, when self-talk and deflection. Mm -hmm. You know, how does that work for the everyday person? Different ways. Okay. <laughs> you know. Um, now, first, explain what that, what that self-talk and deflection means. Like Self-talk is exactly that. Yeah. You know, where you, for example, if I was to go shoot a free throw, you know, I wasn't the best at free throw. Uh, shooters um so it was more hey you can do this you go through a routine and you say look all right you're going to do this for mum and dad and this is for my kids yeah. and then you shoot the ball yeah. it didn't happen then you repeat itself again yeah. so for me that was self-talk yeah um it's a positive self-talk it yeah. was always positive yeah. self-talk. Yeah. yeah yeah um and even the way we'd interact with teams especially uh with the breakers whom i played with was at least the constructive way you said things to people. Yeah. You know, if you were to tell somebody they messed up, it was you'd tell them, but then you'd make sure you'd go back to them yeah. and say, "Hey, this is what you did wrong. This yeah. is why I went at you." So it was yeah. uh, constructive uh, reinforcement. Uh, yeah. And that kind of positive language use while you play also played into how you ended up talking to yourself. Yeah. So yeah. 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 I think I answered your question. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So 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 important to, and and it doesn't come naturally i guess it's mm. something you work on yet yeah? oh, totally. i mean you know. look when i first took the tall black captaincy role um i tried to do everything under the sun um, uh, at the end of the tournament with the coach uh, oh, he actually brought me into his room and he said yeah. oh, i having a couple of beers and he said oh how do you think you went i said yeah i think it went pretty well he said to be honest if you were shit you know you try to do everything be the all-encompassing person that you thought a person should be he said no just Stick to what you can do, perfect that. You know, and that's the same thing. It's like 
regardless of what situation you go through, if you understand who you are sure. and what you can cope with, yeah. then you'll be able to deal with it a lot more. Yeah. So stick to what you are good at. Yeah. And do it to the best of your ability. Do, do it to the best of your ability. I oh, know it's that, cliche, but no, well, that's great advice. Simple, yeah. but effective, yeah. Yeah, I mean, stay in your wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I always say, and, and for the weaknesses, and we all have weaknesses uh, in the surround of people who are strong at that. Yeah, exactly. you know, and, and you learn from them, right? You learn from them. So tell us, you know, the, the first uh, strategy for the talk, which is tell, is about seeing the telltale signs and helping and approaching people. In your case, you spoke to mom and dad about your depression. Yeah. You know, they saw you, you know, in bed and, you know, finding it difficult. Um, how many of your friends, did they see the telltale signs of you feeling down? This is why talk's so important for me. Um, no, I didn't. We didn't talk about it. Came through a period where it wasn't to be talked about. Yeah. Okay. And if you had talked about it, yeah. Well, then everybody just looked at you sideways and then just moved forward. You know, this is why it's so important to be able to communicate, to divulge your darkest secrets to the people that you trust. Yeah. You know, and it's not even divulging your darkest secrets. It's just entering, sharing them, yeah. sharing. I mean, yeah. those days where we sit down as families and have dinner after work, have more of those, you know, yeah. because it's just a simple interaction with who you know. Um, humans are supposed to do that, I feel. Yeah. And we're not supposed to be cooped up in a, in a room looking at screens 24-7. Yeah. Um, we're supposed to interact. And that's yeah. Why, yeah, talk. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and acknowledging, you know, and when people open up, uh, and talk about their mental uh, health concerns. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really important to acknowledge because, you know, invariably people jump to give, give you advice or, as you said, you know, look sideways and go forward or ignore you uh, or to, you know, share their own stories and so forth. How important was it for you to be acknowledged about your depression? Um, I think it was more mys for myself. Yeah. Once I acknowledged I had depression, it was easy to move forward. Yep. Not easy, but it was like, okay, I know there's some steps. But a starting point. Yeah, yeah. starting point. It goes in life in general, right? No one ever wants to say they're bad at anything yep. or to say you're not good. Yep. But once you acknowledge it, you actually verbally acknowledge it out in the open, I feel, breaks some barriers and you yep. can move forward from there. Yeah, mm. spot on. Very important. Uh, very important step because it really validates that person. It validates that person with, with gratitude and empathy. And, and you know, it, it's something that we don't do that well. Yeah. And, and your, to your point about, we need to acknowledge ourselves first yeah. Yeah, as number one, you know, mm -hmm. put, put an arm, oxygen mask on first, yeah. uh, and then, you know, uh, get others to also then, who trust you to acknowledge you. Yeah. Listening plays an important part in talking, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> um, did you listen to yourself at the start? And how are you listening to yourself I now? I never listen to myself. I mean, if I'm brutally honest, if I did, I wouldn't have. Uh, it wouldn't have taken me so long to solve a lot of <laughs> a lot of problems. Um, but that's the part of learning, right? Yeah. It's learning to listen to yourself, yep. to your cues, yep. to other people, yep. um, and just yeah. Yeah. And how about your friends and your and family? How how well did they listen to you when you were going through these dark times? Mom, dad, right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, yeah. I, I, and I know everybody's different. Yeah. And my perception on it is going to be different to everybody else. Yeah. Um, but when you do have that person to listen, to acknowledge, to hear you out, and to give you positive, constructive yeah. tools to help you, um, yeah, it goes a long way to helping you yeah 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 without going getting too wordy yeah you know? yeah so. we find it quite you know at the best of times we, we find it hard to listen to people because mm -hmm. we are we sort of you know we're almost designed to act and or react mm -hmm. uh when people open up about their concerns yeah um what's your thoughts about listening and what what are some good techniques you can you know share with us about listening uh, making eye contact, yeah. first and foremost, when you, yeah. that way you're engaged in what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, be present, right? Yeah. Be there. Be present. Yeah. But also actually listen. Yeah. Actually, 
ask yourself, what is, what does listening mean to you? Yeah. You know, and without getting too deep into it, like if you know exactly what you're listening for on how you listen, yeah. then I think you accept other people for it. Yeah. And and what we teach as part of the Let's Talk program also is about asking questions. Mm -hmm. Because uh, asking powerful questions and, and open-ended questions yeah. gets the people talking. Yeah. So, you know, we talk about the three F's in listening, you know, um, the, the facts, getting the facts, um, their feelings and their fears, you know, three simple facts, questions, fears, yeah. facts, feelings and fears, yeah. right? Um, so uh, one of the easiest way to listen is think, okay, I'm going to sit down with you. I'm going to listen to you. Almost prepare yourself because sometimes we, um, you know, we're not trained to listen. We don't, we don't get trained to listen in school or university or at our workplace, you know. We get, we get told how to listen. <laughs> or how to talk. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> when things are good, but we, we don't get taught to uh, talk about things when things, you know, uh, are challenging. And especially if it's, uh, you know, mental health issues as well. So, you know, ask questions about the facts is about saying, what happened? Mm. Tell us what happened, you know. Mm -hmm. um, feelings is you know how does that make you feel how does it make you feel okay. and then and they talk about their feelings and, and lastly you can ask what scares you most about it what scares you most about fears yeah. you know and i think when people talk about their fears you know and they themselves realize oh this is why i'm feeling like this you know this is why i you know i'm reacting to this and it's about listening is about asking really good open-ended questions as well okay. to get the other person talking yeah. you know uh, which makes it easier then for you to listen, you know, otherwise you it's feel like, an answer. Uh, yeah, uh, well, well, you know, it's, it's, uh, otherwise, you know, we tend to, when, when people stop talking, we feel like we need to fill the space, Yeah. you know, we, we need to talk and fill the space. And sometimes you, we just sit with them, you know, and, and get them to talk openly about it. Um, the first strategy is keep in touch. Now, how important was keep in touch when you were going through these challenges in terms of your family? Sounds like you had a you have an amazing family, man. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. <laughs> you meet all sorts of friends when we are recording a, a podcast here. Oh, Guys, we, we actually come, on, come, on, come and say hi. We're just doing a, a let's talk a cafe here with uh, Mika, um, some some uh, friends here from Melbourne who's just happened to be walking. <laughs> We'll we'll catch up with you a bit yeah, later, yeah. yeah? So. Okay. No, no, <laughs> you know, who knows, you know? Yeah. Surface paradise and you know, you can't get away from Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Um, keep in touch. So important. And you were fortunate enough to have amazing parents who kept in touch with you. How about others around you? How important was it to keep in touch with you? All mental illness is different, right? Mm. And for depression, it was really important for me. Yeah. Um, and I'm guessing it would be for anybody else because yeah. I can't speak on their behalf, but I can speak on my experience. Yeah. And for me, having constant contact with just being able to somebody just come and talk to you. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily I would be, uh, go back to them with yeah. anything. It was just the fact you could hear somebody. Yeah. And I think that's important. So yeah, being able to have that kind of verbal touch yeah. uh, or any kind of interaction is huge yeah. in my opinion. Absolutely. And what you're doing with Morph is about keeping in touch, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. building that village connections. Yeah. Um, so going forward with Morph, mm -hmm. tell us what, what's your plans? Really want to reach out to the sporting community. That's where I've spent the last 20 yeah. years, yeah. around 20 years in it. Um, like I said, stay in your wheelhouse and try yeah. to take that. And then really the passion is to get out to first responders teachers yeah. um, police force the army things like that because yeah i just think in this world and what the, the pandemic has shown is that you can always do more yeah. there's always more to do and yeah. more things to create to help yeah. people um yeah. and at this point everybody's i think got their arms ears yeah. eyes all open to yeah. taking whatever so yeah. um is just trying to help in this space, yeah. real passionate, yeah. um, and just being able to provide people with help. Yeah. Not just help, but just, hey, here's a tool. Yeah. Uh, use it, use it if you want. Yeah. If you don't, it's cool, we just leave it marinate, as yeah. you like to say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a help and service. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. For the people who are listening uh, at home, um, 
who are going through depression. And, and we, we talked about this earlier, that there's, there's levels of depression, yeah? yeah? Um, for people who are out there, uh, who are feeling depressed, what's your message to them in terms of opening up? Yeah, it's a hard one, man. Um, just to regurgitate everything we've talked about, is talk, keep constant contact with those yeah. that are your loved ones or those that you've listened to in the past. Yeah. Um, as hard as it is, try and keep those doors wide open. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. As simple as that for me. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I'm a totally different person to the next person. Yeah. Um, if anybody that has had the same kind of experience I have had yeah. in depression, that's what I would recommend. Yeah. And how about families? Um, what's your message to families who have, you know, uh, one of their kids or young person or their partners who have depression? What's your message to families? Uh, to get help. Yeah. You know, to get professional help. Yeah. Um, but also to trust your gut instinct. Yeah. Also, as parents, yeah. you know, yeah. at the end of the day, you can have all this information in front of you. Yeah. If you don't trust for you to suffer, deliver it, yeah. then we'll go nowhere. Yeah. So show them love, a lot of love. Well, that's what you got, isn't it? From, yeah. from mum and dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was tough love, but it was love. Yeah. It, was it came from an amazing place. Yeah. And, and man, you, what you've achieved in your career has been amazing. You know, like, I mean, it, it really is. And, and what's really impressive about you is that, you know, and you've had an amaz amazing career for 20 years. But also now what you're doing with community, you know, you're helping the community, other athletes, other people, you know, a bit more as yeah, well. Yeah. So I really, you know, wish you all the best. Thank you. And and thanks for coming on the show and, and sharing your story. Uh, it's taken a lot of courage, I guess, you know, to, to do that. Uh, and it's going to help people out there who are, who are listening as well. So, guys, um, thank you for joining us uh, for another episode of Let's Talk Cafe. Uh, all the way from Sunshine Coast, it's a beautiful day. Uh, uh, here in, in Queensland. Um, and if you're feeling down, if you're feeling depressed, um, really, as, as Mika said, talk to the people you trust. It's so important to have those conversations and really uh, share your, your stories, you know, show your, share your depression, share your anxiety uh, with somebody you care about and, and somebody who cares about you. If you don't have that, if you don't, still don't feel like you can do that, please call your helplines. Wherever you are in the world, call your helplines in australia the lifeline you know 13 11 14 uh it's a free call great service you know and there's you know, beyond blue and kids helpline as well um reach out you know it, it, can, it can make a difference so thanks again for joining us uh here in, in surface paradise uh we're gonna go grab some lunch after this yeah. you know and um so until then uh, until then thanks again mate thank you for joining thanks, and let's keep talking